It just sounded like they were playing cards, and I thought, oh my God, I'm nuts. <laughs> so anyways, I went back. I knew that bed was right. So I went back and got back in bed again, and I thought, I know I'm in the right bed. I know I'm in the right place. I'm not in a weird place or anything, so I thought, well, the heck with it. Night, night time, I'm going to go to sleep. So I did. I, I went to sleep, and I think the nur it was a nurse, I think, that uh, came in and said, come on, it's only 6 o'clock, get in bed, you know. I said, okay, I should be up, okay, fine. But it was just a weird sensation. Ooh, just all, everything was wrong. So anyways, when it got early in the morning, Aaron was here because of my nerves. So I said, I thought I was in the wrong bed or something. I'm not right the way I should be here, you know. So I did. I went back to sleep. Okay, in a matter of a couple hours or hours, whatever it was. And she comes and I said, Oh, I'm so glad. I, I, everything's okay now. You're here. And she said, Well, what do you think I'm doing? You're in the hospital and I'm in the hospital. We're in the right place. And I said, Well, boy, you sure scared me because I felt lost. You know, everything was wrong. And then I fell off to sleep, and then, of course, I, she came in about 6 o'clock, something like that, 6, 7 o'clock. And I kept saying, oh, I'm so glad everything's all right, you know, because I felt like I, I had been in the nighttime. So I, that's where I was all messed up. So I, uh, she came in to get the clothes, and get us up, and, uh, so what you're describing, for, for the benefit of everybody watching, is when you were in the hospital, you were hospitalized with a stroke on March 8th. And you're describing an event and a level of confusion that you were experiencing when you were in the hospital. And it was very obvious early on, you were only in the hospital for a little over two weeks. Actually, two hospitals. Uh, one in Rifle and the other one in... Uh, See, I didn't remember Rifle. No, that was four days you were there and, and that was your level of confusion and disorientation and you were even frightened, you know? I was frightened. And I thought they were strange people. They were talking at a th two or three places. Hold it up. I just do that all the time. Everybody does it all the time. I know. Okay. Look at it. Do the okay sign. Good. Now can you come to your middle finger? Yeah. Good. Now can you come to your middle finger? Yeah. 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 Yeah
you can you can walk and talk and uh, uh, are very oriented right now. You, sure. There was some level of memory impairment, and that some of that may continue to improve. We expect that all areas sure. will improve. But uh, well, go ahead and show them by standing up. Would you be willing to stand up and walk around and, and sure. just let everybody see how how well you get around? Yeah. Beautiful. It's not all over again. It's just a different way. And it's going to take a lot of practice. And the best things you can do is make sure this hand is doing things. Don't leave it out and only use this hand. You keep saying, I wonder if I'm going to be left-handed. This is going to be your natural instinct because this one does what you tell it to. But I want this one to be included always because that's the best way for it to learn. Okay? So, do I practice it? You can practice this kind of thing at home. Controlling the pressure and doing all that at home. When you comb your hair, hold the comb in this hand. Make yourself comb your hair with that hand. Brush your teeth with that hand. Now, if you can't get this one to do it, you can do both your hands together. So this one can kind of tell this one what to do. Okay? Turn it off now. Do you understand that? During the first few days, you could hardly raise your hand off your lap. But now, if, if I reach out, you have you have pretty good control now. Sure. Generally speaking, the gross motor, but the fine stuff, you still get kind of spasms and stuff in your hand. On the other hand, see, I can't do it this way. Yeah, yeah. And that first thing that brought to mind was uh, I was losing my hand, right hand, or my yeah, my left hand was coming back. When I was a child, I was left-handed. And that, to me, that was weird. I was holding my hand, trying to put it together, what this was all about, because I've, ever since third grade, I was. Well, you'll, you'll be relying on your left hand, but we don't want to neglect the right hand either. No, absolutely not. And I took some video footage, and I'll show along with this little, little segment, uh, that introduces the topic here about uh, you know what happened with the stroke with you and your delightful progress that we're seeing and uh, uh, but some of the uh, therapeutic uh, interactions with the occupational therapy and the speech therapist and the physical therapy I got some of that on on tape and uh, I'll splice it together with this stuff and uh, I'll send it to, to the kids and everybody who's concerned about you who, you know, it, they weren't able to come out. But, uh, and, and I did tell a lot of the people, you know, it probably wouldn't be a good thing to rush out because, you know, you're... you're I level, wouldn't have wanted them yeah. at that time. Yeah, yeah. It was a bad time for yeah. you and it wouldn't have helped you any to have people clamoring around you. But now's a good time, you know, we're here, uh, we share the apartment here, and we got this, this uh, two bedrooms plus this nice big couch that rolls out into a bed, so if anybody wants to come out and visit, uh, uh, we'll even feed you. Sure. Sometimes we use this rail. You just had one hand, one time you used it with this hand, the other time you used it with this hand. We were using this rail the whole time. I think when you have a choice, if you have a choice, you should be using this arm to hold on to. You should be. That's your stronger arm. So now let's try it. Let's use just this arm and go up the stairs again. So this, no, you don't get to hold on here. That's why we're pretending there's no rail here. No rail. You know, this is the only rail there is. Is it the other side? Home. So now she's, she's impulsive in everything she does. Sure. And so 
we recommend you do is before she gets up, like from a chair, let her stop and think, okay, where are you planning on going, you know, what do you need to think about before you get up? Sure. Just so that there's like nothing in her way that she might trip over. To help slow her down, you want to kind of say stop and think. Mm -hmm. Okay. disorienting to oh, begin yeah. with. But then and the first time this big heavy set guy came in to take care of me or want something, you know, I wanted something. I thought, what the hell am well, I doing in here? It's strange and here these people are talking and I don't even know who they are and oh it was, Well now you know what you were doing there, don't you? Yeah, sure, everything's Backwards, well, sure. Do, you, do I use that head or that head? Now it's even more confusing for the fact that this hand comes in too now. Right, that's your good hand now. Huh? Yeah, and then that that's funny. I'm not funny. So stop and, and think about this one. So if you have a rail on the left side and you're going upstairs, which rail should you use? Well, I'm starting to think that I'm left-handed, so I'm going to have to use my left hand. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then that's going to be hard. You know, I was sleeping in the same bed all the time in the hospital. It was new to me. Yeah, I've got some footage that shows you you're, you're, you're a little childish in, in the way you sure. <laughs> Sure. Did you ring it? Huh? Did you ring the bell? I thought I did, but I got it in my hand, but, and it says this, but I don't seem to be uh, coordinated here. Hey, 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 hey. That one? No, 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 no. Sit, sit down, please. Yeah, she's asking you to ring the bell. Did you ring the bell? This is for me to ring the bell. Do I walk over there to ring the bell? Well, I, I just uh, got the camera going here, but uh, I think she's waiting for you to ring the bell to make her come to get you. But that's probably what just like the nurse, as that if you make sense. as if you wanted the nurse alert the nurse by ringing the bell, please. I don't know this is well, what do you usually do to when you before you want to get up and go to the bathroom? You call. I'm for, in the bed. No, you call for help. How do you call for help? How do you ring the bell? Well, I got this in my hand. That's all. I know, but you've done it a hundred times. How do you ring the bell? If you're laying in bed, what button do you push to let somebody know that you need help? You don't hear that? Nope, I don't hear it. I don't know what these are, but sorry, I haven't got used to that. Uh, it's that one on the... Uh, Next, next to your arm there. It's the one on the bed. Next to my arm, I heard this. I don't can't do that, so mm -hmm. I'd have to find where it is. It's got that cord on it. It's, there it is. It's that red button. It's not those other ones. Here? You got it. 
Hey, 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 don't pull it. Don't pull it. It's an occupational therapist, and I believe a speech therapist will come too over the uh, next few weeks and months uh, to, to continue to follow up with your physical therapy. And, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. You met uh, Debbie. She's the physical therapist. And Very Mandy, nice. the, yeah, yeah. Very Mandy nice. is uh, going to work on your hand primarily or in conjunction with the rest of your body. But uh, that's going to be critical, that hand there. But I'm real optimistic. I think you oh, bounced back and, uh, you know, you've had the uh, triple bypass, the aortal aneurysm with the stent and the shunt. So, uh, you know, now you've got a stroke under your belt. <laughs> <laughs> Dipsteria, everything, you know, it's so... How can you have all of this in one body? I don't know. At 82 years old, the boot. Yeah, still alive. Yeah, when, even when I was a kid, it was, before I even got to school, it was uh, measles, mumps, everything. And Loretta had to sleep in the same bed. She never got anything. And I got everything. I had every pneumonias, measles, mumps, and her, and she slept in the same bed. Never got a a thing. A diphtheria. She got diphtheria. So why she didn't die? Uh, no, no. She didn't have anything. She had everything. Here now, I'm in an area where I had everything. I was always sick. It was weird. But uh, yeah, everything's okay. I so that's all, that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to introduce uh, the fact that you're okay. It's sure. been less than three weeks. You're out of the hospital. Thank God it was it was a mild stroke and it wasn't debilitating or anything. You've got some challenges to be sure, but uh, uh, I expect you to be you know almost back to where you were. Well, I am almost. Back. I think so. I think so. That's a good thing we're practicing. Yes, because uh, that's right. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. So you got to use this one, okay? So what are you gonna do? I'd ring the bell for the next On... six months if they didn't. Yeah, use that one, okay? This one, you know, one was going. Yeah, okay, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Uh, I'd like to go to uh, a nice restaurant tonight. Okay. <laughs> do you want to get up and go somewhere right now? Do you need to use the bathroom or you want to sit in your chair? Uh, I'll just show the very specific uh, functional stuff that you will be doing here. Sure. You know, I, you're not doing any cooking right now, but, you know, I like to cook anyway. And, Good. Uh, you know, other than that, you can do stuff. And you'll probably want to cook pretty soon anyway, you know, something. Um, other than that, uh, you know, I've communicated with uh, Dale and Daryl and uh, Sonette and Bucky and Donna by uh, email and Becky. phone calls from Becky, oh sure. sure. And uh, so this is just a nice way that uh, they can see you know, almost firsthand how you're doing uh, sure. by video. I think you're, I think Christian's going to put a book together. It sounds like he has some good materials. Just to help with pictures of your family and keep them organized so that you have them there. So when people ask you, you know, what's your son's name, so you can just look it up. You know what I mean, Louise? Yeah. And so he was telling me that you have two sons of your own that you had. I know you have adopted lots of people, yeah. but so you have, um, well, actually one son, Steve, and then Steve Patricia. And Pat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And where does Pat live? Uh, Pat is. Uh, he told me in Vegas. Las, Las, Ve Las Vegas. Yeah, Vegas. And then Steve lives. And, uh, I put it on a sign there. Oh, great. He, 
he lives in Colburn. Mm -hmm. Steve does. And how many kids does he have? Uh, three. And what are their names? Keith, Kevin, and Kenny. All right. They're all in the KKK. Yeah. <laughs> you know, every, everything's okay. Everything's okay. Yeah. Yep. I'm looking forward to 90. You're looking forward to 90, huh? Sure. Now, you usually come up with saying every birthday. 81, still having fun, 82, now what do I do, or whatever it was. Yeah. 83, what's 83 going to be? I'm free. 83 and I'm free. <laughs> why, yeah. Why not? Yeah, it's funny. You know, I have to tell you something. Uh, when, I was <clears throat> when I was in that hospital, I kept seeing... Uh, this one man that was in this sitting in this. I remember you mentioning something, yeah. Well, he was there about three days or so in the side of eating breakfast and everything, and I could see him. That was in the rifle hospital. Yeah. That was I, a, yeah, the guy who got his leg amputated. Oh, yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. I wasn't sure, but anyways. He, they'd bring him his breakfast and everything, and he would eat. And they were wondering what they were going to do with him, because there was no room, and <clears throat> this was, I guess he was real bad or something, I don't know. But anyways, I kept seeing every day when he would eat, and it was like uh, there was no room, and they were getting edgy, you know. But. You know, isn't that funny? You know what the truth of the matter of that was, don't you? I spoke to his daughter, and uh, they put him out in the hall, not because there wasn't any room, but because that's, that's a good thing to do. Because he liked to be out, and he liked to be around the people, and he'd be yeah. sawing logs right in the hallway in his little reclining kind of a hospital chair. And uh, his daughter would come quite often and visit, but they were getting ready to transfer him to a, a VA hospital in Grand Junction. And his, uh, you know, his amputated uh, limb was, you know, not healing as well as they'd like before they got a pro could get a prosthetic going. So, I, I got. To but you, in, in your state, you know, probably read into that, you know gloomy scenarios, you know, that's that's what, you know, medication and hospitals and, you know, when the brain isn't functioning, it does, it reads into things, you know. Well, anyways, sure. I saw him go out of the building, okay. and I was, I had the way that I could get to see him every day in the hall. Sure. So finally, the one day, he wasn't in the hall, and they were feeding him and everything, and they were moving him out. Right. So I kept looking at that, uh, wondering what they were going to do to him. Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking that they were going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was true. I, I thought I was... Uh, and, and finally, they moved him out of the hall, and then I couldn't see where he was going. And I was wondering what was going on. Well, finally, this one day, it ended up that he was going someplace with about six people with him. So I thought, well, I guess he's going to die, you know, and they were going to bury him. And funny out, outside there he had uh, the, these people were all dressed up and, and I thought I guess that's just what they do to them you know <laughs> they, they bury them or they, and I thought 
That is it's very nice just to take him outside and put him in a hole. And that's what I thought. I, whatever, maybe did, maybe he didn't, I don't know. But anyways, I just felt so sorry to that man, about that man, because he was, his family was standing there and talking to him and patting him and everything. Yeah, you're, the, the associations in your yeah. brain were not, no. not tight. And, and it was, it, to me, uh, that really wasn't very nice. And I got to thinking, well, what would they do to him? They'd bury him, so I guess he's going to die. And that, I didn't see him after that, and I saw the people walking away and everything else. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, and I, I felt sorry for him. And I kept thinking, I wonder if everybody does that, what do they do? Do they put him in a chair or do they put him in a box or, you know, what do they, what do they do? And that was a weird thought. Yeah, yeah. Spoopy. Gloomy. Ooh. Yeah. And he was an elderly man and I heard somebody say that old man, so I thought, he's just going to die and, you know, do be that way. And, Everything and I said, well, I guess I'm next, <laughs> or or in the future that would be. Worse. This is the place where they keep you before you die. it happens. Da -da. Yeah. Nope, it nope, was, nope, nope. It was it was a spooky thought. Yeah. Just to think that. Well, what else would you do with them? You'd have. No, to. you had your chance to die, and you missed it. Maybe that, uh, maybe that is. More than once you've missed it, so. Yeah. You missed it this time, too, so. Yeah. Don't be worrying about that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, and the funny thing I was thinking, well, you know, people die at different ages. Uh huh. So I thought, well, I guess it's me. That's what they're going to do with me. <laughs> It wasn't a, th a good thought, no. and I just thought it was, they were, they were just not going to take me yet. No, nope. they're was, not. They're you know, not. I, I, I just thought, well, wonder when they are going to take me. Yeah. And I thought, and I wouldn't have thought it if it wasn't those people in their clothes, their suits and stuff. They were dressed too nice, huh? Yeah. You knew something was wrong. <laughs> yeah. I was going to go next, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, strange. Funny. Strange, yeah. yeah. It's just a funny feeling. Well, you know, when I found you after you started stroking out, boy, you were strange enough. Yeah. I felt Strange, you know. Yeah. But, uh, not yet. Yeah. Strange. Funny. But one thing that I thought, they were going in the back of the one hospital or a building or whatever. Uh, I couldn't see and put down into the ground. But I thought that that was nice if it was a place to go. <laughs> uh, yeah. I thought they were well organized. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But yeah, I had that feeling that that's the way they do it. Good grief. Onto the floor slowly and lay down on your back. And remember, don't hit concrete against concrete there. Okay, and you can go ahead and get on up. Do all the way up to standing. All the way up to standing. Come on, stand up. No problem. You know, time to think happy thoughts. Sure. Sure. You know, you're not disabled or crippled. Little impairment in, in some areas, but uh, shoot. You'll get back on the saddle. 
that all of that whole thing was weird. It just seemed like nobody cared, so they, were, they just were going to put them down in the hole. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Awful. Yeah, the nightmare's over. Yep. But yeah, that would have been in the uh, first four days at the uh, rifle hospital here. Yeah. Nice new hospital, staff were great. Yeah. And then you went to uh, Glenwood Springs at Valley View Hospital. Staff was all great there. Yeah. We gave them a little report and card. <clears throat> actually, everybody was uh, happy and sure. talking. Sure, sure. Real nice environment. Yeah. And I've got footage of uh, a lot of that stuff, and uh, you know I'll splice it into this thing, and everybody can kind of see what you went through in, in your therapy. Yeah. It but it didn't take much. Here it is. It's not even three weeks, and you're back home. Right. What are you contemplating? How, like like that? That? Yeah. How do you want it cooked? Kind of medium rare. Kind of medium rare. Yeah. Potato. Uh, right. 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 for you if you okay. do the steps for me. And very small <laughs> salad. Okay, what kind? Sliced <laughs> tomatoes or some, just something to make it like that. You know, I don't know. Okay, tomorrow. <laughs> you go home sometime. Yep, you you'll leave the hospital uh, tomorrow uh, and <laughs> we'll have some steak. Okay. <laughs> Yes, and in in a way, it was it was a something to come that had to happen. I have to go. You you told me that you know you were ready to die oh, before right. at the bypass. You, sure. You know you're not afraid of that. Oh no. no. But this time it it occurred to you again, huh? Yeah. That hey, you know I'm. I can't kick and scream forever, huh? Yeah, and it seemed like <clears throat> my friends were there to say hello and goodbye and everything, so everything was okay. It wasn't a good thought, but it was... Yeah, yeah. Good time to live, good time to die, I mean... Sure. And look at, look at the young people and look at the babies and everybody has to go. Sure. Yeah, weird. But anyways, that's the way it was. And, and you stop and think baby's coming in and they got to go someday. You know, it's going to go eventually regardless. Sure, sure. I've never been afraid to die. No, not to my knowledge, I've never been afraid Sure, to die. yeah. Death is, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting thing, I mean. Someone has said, it, I, I think it was uh, an existentialist who said, uh, unless a man die, he cannot live. Meaning that li you know, life has urgency because death is out there. It, sure. it gives meaning and, and relevance and purpose to our life, you know, yeah. moment by well, moment. Well, they've got to go. You can't keep getting another one and another one and another one. It's part. And I've looked at that picture up there so many times thinking, gee, at one time I had a mother and a father and, and that isn't bad at all because those people have to go to. So everybody has to go eventually. You can't get them up there piled up like that, you know, you, you've got to put them someplace. And it's kind of a weird feeling. Oh yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, you, it, you know, what's the the meaning of life and what's the meaning of humanity? You know, is it just an endless chain of, yeah. you know, people, you know, living, you know, the killing for the state and then dying and and you know the chain goes on, you know, and yeah. on and on and on. And uh, you know that's where our Christian faith comes in. Sure. And, you know, we believe that. You know, the way things go isn't the best way. There's a better way. Yeah. 
but still, it's the the organism of you know humanity and the species uh, is kind of like a, just an ongoing chain. It is. It is. But hopefully, it's more than that, and hopefully, there's there's more shining examples of, of humanity, you know, like Christ and sure. even guys like Gandhi, you know. It'd be nice if there's a few more people like him around. So anyways, <clears throat> kind of strange. Live while you can, you know, a good life to live while you can. But anyways. Okay. Where are you going there, Big Mama? Right here. All right. Had enough? Welcome home there, Mama! Thanks, son. That's a better job than the other one was. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. That's nice. And you know, I can hold on more both ways. Yeah. How's it feel to be home now? Great. All right. I feel like I never talked so much in all my life to try to create my own life. Oh, good, good deal. She's a little uh, cantankerous right now. Oh, really? <laughs> well, there's that phone. Uh, you wanted to know. I, I got you the, the phone. It should be easy. I Velcroed it down so it won't pull away when you pick it up. So just act she like you're really? answering the phone. Just No, just pick up the handle, please. Handle. Yeah. The ring. The phone rings. Pick it up. Hi. Hi, I'm Eloise. Who are you? Okay. Yeah, that, that's narrow and nice. It's easy. It's easy yeah. to pick up. It's a simple phone. I want to get one with speed dial for about 10 different numbers that you can just hit the button so you don't have to fumble for numbers or anything like that. But in the meanwhile, this ought to hold you over for a little bit. Now, hang up the phone, would you please? And then, oh, pretty close. There you go. See, that's pretty simple. <coughs> yeah. Now, if you move your hamburger away. That's not a hamburger. That's a salad. Okay, whatever's in that little little styrofoam thing, if you'll move that into your lap, put that in your lap. Yeah, pick up the, the hamburger box there. Hamburger box? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I... put that in your lap, please. Okay, now see that help button over there? That's if you need help. If I'm in the room and, oh, and you're yeah. sitting out here and you're looking for a phone number and you say, Hey, Christian, where the heck is that crazy phone number? You just push that button. Push it now, please. Holy mackerel! Oh, that's neat. Yeah. It's like the hospital, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and there's, there's four of those uh, throughout the house here. Well, so uh, you nice. press that button, I'll come running, and I'll open jars, flip pages, whatever you need. And uh, I was showing Steve a, a page off the internet that uh, has something for when you, you're sleeping. So that when you get out of bed and start wandering around, don't have your full balance with you, that I'll know that. And I'll come and make sure you don't stumble okay. or anything. But... I haven't ordered it off the internet yet because I, I just I'm still investigating, but I think it's uh, I think it's what what I I think will help you a lot. That's beautiful. What is? That phone. Yeah, I know you're one tough cookie, and we're real proud of you. Well, I know. You managed uh, to shrug off that triple bypass and that aortal aneurysm, and now you have a stroke and. A little over two weeks later, you're walking right back up into this apartment, and we're we're real proud of you. Sure, I uh, and I've been, you know, talking to Steve, just like, don't change me, don't make me anything different more than I am now. I mean, everybody's here to help me. Then what? What's what's the big deal? There is no big deal. We're we're. She was there, it seemed like, every day uh, for me. 
laugh and joke all the time, you know, and it was, it seemed like she was there all 24 hours. I know she wasn't, but one, one night I got kind of frightened and I heard these voices. And <clears throat> So I couldn't imagine it was dark and uh, uh, it just didn't seem proper, right, white, that it was right or early or not. I couldn't get kind of focus what it was, sure. or when, you know. And I heard a couple of uh, voices that I didn't really recognize and yet I was in my bed and uh, one time I, I tried to get up and get close to see who are these people it was in the middle of the night and everybody was talking and and uh, it was just weird real weird yeah so <clears throat> anyways I got up and I walked to the door I still wasn't familiar with the layout or anything. And yet the bed was the same bed and everything else. So I went back to bed and I heard these voices that weren't too familiar. And I got to the door and I wanted to know why. It's dark and my bedroom was all was this real? It wasn't a dream? No, this is real, because I got out. You got stood up in the hospital bedroom? Okay. Yeah, of my room, and okay. here, these were all strange people. So, finally, this woman, I went out there, and I saw her, and I knew I should be out there. <laughs> so I thought, well... I heard, I know her voice, she's uh, okay, and I don't think she's, uh, she wasn't in that shift, you know, so the bed was okay, and the, the, the lounge around, and everything was okay. So I went back and laid there, and I thought, well, gosh, you sound like strange people, I don't know them. So, Anyways, I, I went out and, and I recognized this nurse and I got up again and I stood there and boy, she come in there and I, you get in under those covers, you know, and you don't bong out of here. And, and go slow, Eloise. Go, go slow. My name is Your name is Bess. Go slow. Stop. 